Welcome to new episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Today I want to show you how you can use linked lists in a Linux driver or Linux kernel module. But before we jump right into the code, let's talk about the theory a little bit. So here I have opened the PDF of the Linux device driver book, chapter 11, and in here we have a chapter about linked lists, because the kernel already offers you some implementations of linked lists, so you don't have to implement your own. And to use this, you have to include linux slash list.h and the key to it is this list head struct. So this list head struct contains two pointers, a pointer for the previous element and a pointer for the next element in the list. So after you have created an empty list, it looks like this here. So the next pointer is pointing to the previous element, the previous to the next, and that's it. And if you want to add some elements in the list, you still need a start point for your list and then you can create um, your elements and if you want to um, add some data to it, you can define a struct like the struct to do up here. The struct contains a field with, from the type struct list head. This is this list head you can see down here and the rest of the struct you can fill with your user data. And this works the following way. So the next pointer here of the start element is pointing to the linked list element of the first um, yeah, element in the list and then here the next pointer is pointing to the next element and here the next pointer is pointing to the previous um, element in my start and so you can iterate the list in both directions. So that's basically it. Okay, so now let's try to implement a simple linked list in a Linux kernel module. So here I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH and let me navigate into my Linux driver tutorials folder and I will use my simple hello world kernel module as a base for today's video. We'll create a new folder we'll call 34 list. Then let me see the into this folder and let's take a look what's in here. So we have the source code for the kernel module and we have a make file to build it. So first thing I will do is I will rename my kernel module to my list.c and I have to change the name here in the make file as well so I'm still able to compile it. So now let's open the source file up. So this is just a hello world Linux kernel module. First thing I have to do is I have to include two new header files. So for using lists I have to include linux slash list.h and as I will dynamically allocate memory for my list elements I have to include linux slash slab to be able to use kmalloc, the kmalloc function. Now let me change the description here um, demonstration for lists in the kernel. Okay, that's cool. And here I will write the module name before the prints. So I can grab the kernel slug. This will make everything a little bit easier. Okay, and now here in the init function I will implement the list, iterate through it and then delete the list again. So First, I need to define a struct, I will call it my data, and this struct will contain an element from the type struct list head for my list head to be able to navigate through the list. And the second uh, element is an array of 64 chars, so I can have some data here in my list. And now I need to um, here create my, the, my list start point. And I also want to initialize it, so I get something like this, a list element which points to itself. And I can do this with the macro list head, and in here I can type in the name I want to use, and I want to use my list here. Okay. So what this does is it's creating this list head structure, and it also initializes it for an empty list. Okay, so now the next thing I need here in my init function is I need a pointer to my data structure and then I can create the list. So let's create a list with three elements. So what I have to do here is I have to use kmalloc to allocate memory for uh, my data struct. So I want to allocate size of struct my data bytes of memories and the flag should be gfp kernel here. Then 
with string copy, I will initialize this text field here. So uh, temp text and I will call hello, I will write hello world in this. And now I have to add this new created element to my list. And I can do this with the function list add tail. This will automatically add an element at the end of the list. The first argument here is the pointer to um, this list struct here in my data struct. And the second argument is a pointer to the list at which I want to add this, so my list. And here I'm using kmalloc, so normally I should check if memory allocation worked fine. But here, for to make this a little bit more simpler, I will skip this check here. Okay, so now let me copy these four lines so I can add two more elements. The only thing I will change here is the data right into it. And um, the last element. Okay, and now the next thing I want to do is I want to iterate through the list and print out the text of every element. So therefore, the Linux kernel already provides some macros for iterating through a list, and I will show you different approaches to do this. So for the first approach, I will need an additional pointer of the type list head. I will call pointer, and this will be my cursor for iterating through the list. And the function for doing so is list for each and the first argument here is my cursor pointer and the second argument is a pointer to the list I want to iterate and this will be substituted as a loop so I can open my braces here and what's in the braces will be executed in the loop. So what do I want to do here? So first I have to get the um, my data struct of the current element and I can do this with the function list entry and in here I have to pass um, my cursor, then the struct the element is part of, and then the name of the list head element inside the struct. And then I can use print k to print it out to the kernel's log. Temp text. And that's it. So this will iterate through the list from the start to the end. If you want to iterate it the other way around, you can use this, you can use list for each pref. Let me comment it out here so it's available. Or yeah, or maybe let's even iterate through this backwards. Okay, now I have dynamically allocated memory, so I have to free it at the end. Free memory. And therefore, I will use another way to iterate through the list. So therefore, I will need the macro list for each entry save. So the benefit of for each entry is I don't have to call list entry to get a current entry. So my cursor now is can be a pointer from the type struct my data and doesn't have to be from the type struct list head. So this is an advantage. And the reason why I'm using save here is because I will manipulate the list and if I want to manipulate the list, for example, I will delete elements from the list, I need this save, um, I need this save variant of this macro here. But for the save um, variant, I also need a pointer with containing the next element in the list. So in case I'm deleting an element, which I will do here, um, in the next pointer, the next element will be stored. Then, once again, I need a pointer to the list I want to iterate. And the last um, argument, once again, is the name of the struct list head in my, my data struct. Okay, and what I will do here is I will call list delete to delete my current element. So temp is a cursor, and here I want to delete my list entry from my list. And then I can call k3 to free the dy dynamically allocated memory. And then let's print out my list. Uh, 
freeing memory done so we can see in the kernel's log everything worked fine. Okay, so that's it. Now let me try to compile this. Let's see if I made some mistakes. This is looking good. So now I will load my kernel module. So uh, smart my list ko. This worked fine. So let's take a look at the kernel's log. So what we see here is um, we've iterating through the list backwards. So first the last element, then and at the end the first element, and then we have freed the memory successfully, and that's it. Okay, so that's how to use linked lists in a Linux kernel module. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buy me a coffee.com slash for Linux. So that's for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.